Hey folks, JR, back for another episode of Echoes of Shannon Street Case File. It's going to be episode 47, Blunt Trauma to the Head, Autopsy of Officer Bobby Hester. Well, we get cranked up now, don't forget, click on that subscribe button, go down into the link, click on it, come visit me on the podcast, over on Facebook, my website, follow me on Twitter, a copy of the book, or a copy of the documentary. Okay, now, this is going to be kind of tough today. I'm going to do Officer Hester's autopsy. I've got my wife is going to handle all the medical pronunciations. I, I don't speak English very well, and if you ask me to speak Latin, it's even worse. So you're going to hear her voice on here from time to time pronouncing all those big long words that I can't pronounce. Autopsy report. Name of decedent, R.S. Hester. Race, white, sex, male, age 34. County Medical Examiner, J.T. Francisco, M.D. Address, Memphis, Tennessee. District Attorney General, Honorable Hugh Stanton, Jr. Address, Memphis, Tennessee. Anatomical diagnosis, number one, multiple lacerations to head. Number two, multiple contusions to head. Number three, subarachnoid hemorrhage. Number four, cerebral cortical contusions with lacerations. Number five, compound fracture of nose. Cause of death, cerebral cortical contusions secondary to blunt trauma to the head. Narrative of findings. This 34-year-old white male received multiple blows to the head from a blunt object which produce multiple lacerations of the scalp, contusions, compound fracture of the nose, through and through lacerations of upper and lower lips, fracture of a tooth, recent subarachnoid hemorrhage, recent bruises and tears, contusions and lacerations of cerebral cortex, and death. Full and fixed rigor mortis with fixed liver mortis is present at the time of examination. There is absence of green discoloration of the skin and finger pads are smooth of normal texture, consistency, and color at examination. These facts are consistent with death 12 to 24 hours prior to examination. The changes in the brain are consistent with death having occurred 8 to 12 hours following the time of injury. This also is consistent with the type, quantity, and characteristics of the gastric contents identified and the gastric contents pH. On the basis of historical data and autopsy data, it can be reasonably stated that death occurred in the interval from 0400 to 0900 hours, January 12, 1983. The blood alcohol level is 0.03% ethyl alcohol. Autopsy protocol. Autopsy number alpha 83. 30. That means this is the 30th autopsy performed by the medical examiner's office in 1983. Case or chart number Charlie 83-158. Name R.S. Hester, white male, 34 years of age. Date and hour of autopsy, 113.83, 10 hundred hours. Pathologist, doctors, Francisco, Bell, Harlan. This was checked by J.T. Francisco, M.D. 
Date completed, 2-4 of 83. Final pathological diagnosis, primary series. One, multiple blunt trauma to head. A, multiple lacerations. B, multiple contusions. C, subgaleal hemorrhage. D, subarachnoid hemorrhage. E, cerebral cortical contusions with lacerations. F, compound fracture of nose. Laboratory, blood alcohol equals 0.03% ethyl. Blood type equals group O, RH, D positive. Lewis, A minus, B plus. Blood drug screen equals negative. Urine alcohol equals trace. Gastric contents pH equals 3.0. Gastric contents identification. Lima beans, onion, meat, shredded coconut, and brown mush. Officer Hester weighed 154 pounds. It was five foot seven. And this is a continuation of the autopsy protocol. As you can see, they're showing his lungs left and right are both congested. You can see what uh, Officer Hester's last meal was. Notation regarding the fracture to Officer Hester's nose. Wound chart of Officer Hester. I did add the red marking as the so it'd be easier to pick up where the injuries were. If you notice, there's two puncture marks in the lower right leg. You saw it on this wound chart in the previous one. My theory is that they used a, a darning needle or a knitting needle that was recovered from the northeast bedroom, but that's just a guess. Chart of the injuries to the head, almost all these were caused by the metal flashlight. Here you can see the damage to Officer Hester's face. See a lot of abrasions too. Probably from where he was struggling or when they were dragging him across the floor. But you see some of those impacts, the nose and around the eyes. Microscopic summary, lungs. Sections show moderate to marked vascular dilatation and congestion. Some alveolar spaces contain an eosinophilic proteinaceous material. There are multiple focal areas of collapse of alveolar spaces. Some alveolar spaces contain occasional golden brown macrophages. Some lymphatics contain anthracotic pigment. There are focal areas of hyperdistension of alveolar spaces. Some alveolar spaces contain erythrocytes with early infiltration of polymorphonuclear leukocytes. Brain. Sections show areas of cerebral cortex with laceration of cortical parenchyma and hemorrhage into the parenchyma. There is pseudolaminar acute ischemic changes in areas of cortex characterized by alteration in cytoplasmic coloration, darkening, blurring of the nucleus, and increased cellular angularity. There is recent subarachnoid hemorrhage. This is mentioned several times in the autopsy. Officer Hester had an alcohol level of 0.03% in his bloodstream Later on in, in the case file, we'll go over that investigation that they conducted to see if they could show Bobby Hester had been drinking on duty or did he get the alcohol from inside the house. Consent to an autopsy upon the body of Robert Sterling Hester. I hereby consent to a complete autopsy or any and all partial procedures deemed necessary by the physician performing said autopsy being performed upon the body of Robert Sterling Hester by a physician holding 
an unlimited license to practice medicine under the laws of the state of Tennessee. Purpose and procedure to be used in performing said autopsy have been fully explained to me, and I understand same. I understand that the report of results of said autopsy may be furnished to the criminal court clerk of Shelby County, Tennessee, and retained by said clerk as part of his records. I agree that tissues and specimens examined may be retained for analysis if deemed necessary by the physician performing the autopsy. My relationship to the deceased Robert Sterling Hester is that of wife, and I am the proper person to assume custody of said deceased for the purpose of burial. This, the 13th day of January, 1983, signed by Nita M. Hester, person performing custody of body for burial, witnessed by Sergeant Landers, and a copy going to the Attorney General, one to the homicide, and one to the physician performing the autopsy. Recommendation and order for autopsy. Date 113.83. As provided by Chapter 174 of the Public Acts of Tennessee for 1961, the undersigned recommend that the District Attorney General 15th Judicial Circuit, State of Tennessee, order an autopsy on the body of Robert Sterling Hester, deceased. Next of kin of said deceased is Anita M. Hester. Notice of impending autopsy to Anita M. Hester. Date 113.83. You are hereby notified as next of kin that the undersigned is ordering an autopsy on the body of Robert S. Hester, deceased as provided by law. This autopsy will be performed under the direction of the county medical examiner or his deputy as soon as a return to this notice is received. To person serving notice, serve a copy of this notice on said next of kin and make return on the original thereof within 24 hours. In the event said next of kin agree to the autopsy, attach such agreement here too. And then it's signed by Sergeant Landers, signature and title of person serving the notice. You are hereby ordered to perform an autopsy on the body of Robert Sterling Hester, deceased as provided by law. You got one copy going to the county coroner one copy to the county medical examiner, one copy to the district attorney general, one copy to homicide, one copy to the criminal court clerk. Uh, this is a report of investigation by county medical examiner, decedent R.S. Hester, white male, 34 years of age, comments, beating, notification by homicide, you can see they've got the, the little wound chart here on the right. Then you've got all the particulars on Bobby Hester, hair color, eye color. Then they've got probable cause of death, bottom left block there, manner of death. Obviously, it's indication of homicide. And then at the bottom, you can see where Dr. Harlan signed it. All right, it's going to be the second page of that report indicating last seen alive date 1 11 83 p.m then you've got death 1 13 83 0 3 13 hours now they're using that as time of death because that's the time that uh, dr milner purvis milner that's the reserve officer that's also a doctor he's the one that ran over to the house and checked Bobby Hester on the sidewalk. So that's why they're using that time there, even though we know that's much later than the actual time of death. The medical examiner notified 113.83 at 0355 hours. So you can see that the medical examiner was notified not too long after Dr. Milner pronounced Bobby Hester dead. View of the body, 113.83, hours. See at the bottom, handwritten, white male, 34, beaten to death at 22.39 Shannon, 
while being held by seven male blacks in a hostage situation. Victim was a Memphis police officer. See multiple additional charts. The remaining seven male blacks were shot in a shootout with Memphis police. All right, this is going to be certificate of death. Robert Sterling Hester, 11383. Date of birth, December 24, 1948. Male. Death, Shelby County, City of Memphis. Died at City of Memphis Hospital. He's from the great state of Alabama. Married. Weiss. Maiden name, Anita Webb. He did fight in the Vietnam War. Occupation was a police officer. Worked for the Memphis Police Department. Mother and father were Robert Nelson Hester and Mildred Howard. Was buried January 15, 1983 at Forest Hill East Cemetery in Memphis, Tennessee. That's right there off of... Uh, Appling. You've got cause of death, cerebral cortical contusions, multiple blood trauma to head. They're certifying it as a homicide. They're showing 112.83. Victim was beaten. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up this episode. We'll come back here in a few days. We'll probably go on and do the autopsies on the seven suspects. And then we'll probably go back to the house and do the uh, scene investigation from there. Other than that, I don't have much to add. I, I think looking at the autopsy of Bobby Hester, you can see the amount of damage that was wrought upon his body by the suspects in the house. I can't imagine how someone can sustain anger for that period of time. The eight to 12 hours that they beat him, even though they didn't beat him continuously, they came pretty close to beating him continuously. I just don't see how you could hold that much hate in your heart for someone. Anyways, folks, I appreciate you, and as always, I'll see you down the road.